Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're going to be talking to Erin Allen Rooney. And we're going to be talking to her about um, some of the techniques called that she calls the transformation love techniques. And it's really how we can actually shift from seeing things from a place of fear to a lens of love. So welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here, CJ. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. So, you know, I actually went through a period... Um, so about a year ago, not that I've mastered it, but I was wondering, wow, I, I was very conscious about how I was constantly looking at things through the lens of fear. Mm -hmm. um, so what does it mean to you when you talk about looking at things through the lens of love? Well, it means actually kind of turning things inside out. And most of the time we are all kind of brainwashed in this world of fear and we tend to take all the things that are coming at us in kind of the worst possible light. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that, that somebody was honking and they were honking at us because we're not doing it right. Or, you know, that somebody made a comment and, you know, um, that, that something we've done is wrong. And living through love is realizing that the world is actually on your side, that the universe is on your side, and that, you know, most of the time your relationships, they have the best intentions and, you know, giving people more room to have good intentions really goes a long way towards living a happier, drama-free, and, and much nicer, happier life. Mm. <laughs> I've been working towards finding a better way of being mm. forever. And in my own life, in order to solve my own problems, I have tried every kind of therapy and every kind of technique that I have come across. And when I found spiritual technology, it was really, really good at getting rid of the negative stuff, like nothing else. I mean, it's most of the time as counselors and coaches, we're using kind of stone chisels and spiritual technology is like power tools. It's almost like as a coach, it was like having superpowers. And then that, that wasn't enough for me. So I wanted to, to, to make a shortcut for people basically. Because, and, and one of the analogies that I came up with for this was that it's kind of like uh, exercise, you know, I mean, back in the 50s, everybody, you know, when some of the exercise uh, craze started, everybody kind of thought that it was hard work and it would take years, you know, spend a lot of time in the gym and all this, and now we have those seven minute workouts, and we know that it can just be super easy, and you still have to do it, but it's it's like faster, sleeker, more streamlined, easier. And that's really what I was looking for to share with people and, and to use in my own life a faster, easier, clearer, cleaner, easier, simpler way of, of being a better human being. And by that, I hope that we'll save the world. <laughs> and so the tr transformative life techniques came as a result of that. So you thought, ah, okay, here's a shortcut. I mean, People don't have to go through years of therapy. They can and, and address fear by fear by fear by fear, right? Because right? that's a typical way of working. When people talk about doing their work, they kind of work by fear by fear by fear by fear. And then it's like, and I'm healed, you know? Right. right. Versus saying, I just want to look through the world through the lens of love. So the techniques are helping you. It's less about addressing your fears and more about just putting you in a state of being of love. Because it's really, really true that you get what you focus on. Right. And so, you know, like I said about, you know, when you're cold, you don't focus on not being cold. You focus on being warm. Right. And this is the same way, you know, in when you're living in a state of fear and pain and difficulty, the fastest, easy way out of that is to focus on something else. Focus on the positive. Focus on on love, on interpreting the world in a different way. And these techniques... They actually, it's kind of like flipping a switch somewhere way down deep in your body and you can flip that switch. It does still take practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still, you know, so it's, it's, I, I don't want to, to misrepresent that it's a magic bullet, but it is pretty miraculous. Right. So even once you've done the, the, the processes, which do give you that rocket boost, you still have to practice the breathe, open, love kind of thing. You still have to be conscious. You know, it, it takes some effort. It's not hard work, but it takes some effort. Right, but at least I have like a handful of techniques. So when I'm in that place, I, I pull up one of these techniques. When I feel myself not being in the state of love, I can pull one of these techniques up and get me as a shortcut to that place versus focusing on like all my fears and the challenges and the worries. 
I just shortcut it, bring a technique, and I'm all of a sudden, boom, snap into love. Is that right? Yes. yes. I, I actually had a client that I haven't seen in two years uh, mm -hmm. talk, uh, talk to me in the, the Trader Joe's parking lot just yeah. like two days ago. And he was he has gone into this job that is, he's a very conscious person and he needed to make ends meet. So he started selling cars, which is not maybe the most conscious <laughs> kind of job to yeah. have. But he told me that having had that, that neurological anchor has literally saved his life over the last two years because he is able to put himself in that place where we got to with one of these techniques. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's it's more than a happy place because it's it's so fully experiential in your whole being, that champagne bubbles in the soul thing. And it's, you know, I give you techniques through the through the processes to really be able to concretely and, and fully access that in times of stress and strain and go, okay, so, you know, I might be, maybe I just had a fight with my husband or, you know, my kid just crashed the car. And it's, it's a little, it's a little different, like I said, than a happy place, but it's like, I know I can be this. Right. And so you pull up one of those techniques, kid just crashed your car, pull up the technique and you get kind of aligned to your higher being or loving place versus kind of like, what, you know, and, and right. reacting from a place of fear. And so when you think about love, what does that mean? I mean, you've thought about love for a while. I mean, this has been your focus. What is love? Joyfully undertake an effort, relentlessly given and received. Joyfully undertake an effort, relentlessly given, given and received. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And what does that mean based on your experience? I and mean, what does that mean? Well, a lot of times there's so much out there about romantic love. Mm -hmm. And that whenever you talk about love, that seems to be like the one thing that people think about. And that's really like the toenail of the elephant, you know? <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> and so, um, so love as a way of being is full of compassion and it is full of, of giving from your heart, but also giving with intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's thinking with your heart. And then there's the other piece of receiving because to always give is actually not loving. It's not loving to yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you give and give and give and give, no matter what kind of resources you have, eventually you are going to run out. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important, and it's an important piece of self-love to be able to receive. Mm -hmm. So joyfully undertake an effort kind of erases that whole thing about how it's got to be hard work, it's got to be difficult. It should be joyous. <laughs> It should. Yeah, it is funny. We do think of love as a hard working type of thing, don't we? We do. You know, everybody says it's so common knowledge that everybody's like, oh, relationships are hard work, you know, it's yeah. really challenging and this and that. And, and, you know, when it stops being fun, we get divorced or right. we break up with somebody or, you know, we get angry with our kids or whatever because, because it's, it's not always, you know, champagne bubbles, but, uh, but it is, um, it, when you enter into the whole concept as joyfully undertake an effort, when you go, you know, I do want to be doing this. I do love being your mom. I love being your wife. I love being, you know, your counselor or your grocery store clerk. Right, right. I love this part of it. And when you really enter into it by choice and with joy, it, it changes the color of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like it cha would change all aspects of your life too, yeah. right? Yeah, it does. Absolutely. And, and tell us about some of your clients or your own experience and how it did that. Well, um, you know, I was talking to a different client last night who was saying that she's got this, this new relationship and where she, and so she's seeing some ways of behaving that are really not in her own best interest. But one of the things that was really phenomenal to her and to me as I was listening to this was that she was able to see these patterns of like, oh, that's not really such loving behavior towards myself. Maybe I should do something about that. But there was no shame or guilt or whatever. It was just more, it was that kind of clarity that I was talking about. And it was like, you know, this is not where I want to be. This is not how I want to be. So I'm going to do something different. And it was just an entirely different concept than all the stuff we usually go through about like, 
oh, I wish I didn't do that, or I should really stop doing this, or I need to set better boundaries, or all these things. Yeah, just, guilting, you're shaming yourself into a different way. Right, exactly. Or feeling guilty, or like, you know, oh, I know I do that with men, I should really stop doing that, and I should set better boundaries. It wasn't that at all. It was just, you know, that's not a, that's not a, a actually, in this case, that was not a, this is not a true way of feeling, and I'm going to do something different. I have done a lot of this in the past, but... Going forward, I'm going to do something different because I now realize that it's perfectly okay that if I'm not feeling this or, you know, he's not meeting this expectation, I can just do something else. Yes, so I can see that. So would it actually affect the quality of your relationships with people? And it affects the amount of, like, self-love, like you're saying in that example. It's really about going, wait a second, that's not nice to me. <laughs> I'm going to change that, right? That's a, 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 a shift in our mind. So it's about self-love, it's about relationships. And then um, what are some of the other benefits? Well, I think some of the, the biggest and most profound benefits come in the self-love category. Mm -hmm. And what people really are, are commonly misguided about is what it is to love yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, you know, I know that until a few years ago I was pretty confused about it because when you hear this thing, not only is there that big thing about romantic love and you're like I'm supposed to be in love with myself like what how did that doesn't even sound right you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you, kind of, you kind of go on the you know there's a lot of popular culture out there about sort of what I call the the bubble bath and candlelight sort of thing that that's some version of self-love but what I figured out is that it's it's not a one you know a once and done kind of thing it's a relationship Mm -hmm. And that that kind of love, the best way to model that is on a really good friend. And hopefully everybody has been blessed with having at least one really good friend. But, you know, when you look at that relationship, you think, would I say this to that good friend? Would I do this to them? Would I be so unforgiving? Would I be so... And I know that's not really news either, but we all still do it. <laughs> I know. that's. I think that's the ultimate litmus test. And litmus test and plus we all still need to be reminded right we could actually say oh god why didn't you get that thing done oh my god you're so unorganized or blah, 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 you know whatever we say and we would never say that to a friend and you just constantly need to be reminded of those and it sounds like that's where your techniques come in to help yes to folks. Okay, so on July 24th, you have an introduction to all your materials, and then July 26th, you're going to be showing some of these techniques that kind of help you snap into that place of being of love. And then, in addition to that, you're going to talk about the three steps that are part of bringing love in every moment. Um, is that right? Yes. Yes. That's okay, right. great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. It has been a blast. Thank you, CJ. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.